Hi there. Uh, so this is key area six, which is transport systems and animals of unit two, national five biology, uh, that being multicellular organisms. Okay, so key area six, there's one more key area to go after this. This particular key area will be covered in three different videos covering blood, blood vessels, and then the heart. Um, and we're starting with blood, but we'll give you a little overview of the unit to start off with. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the component of blood. We're going to look at the different things or the different roles of red blood cells, the different roles of white blood cells and knowing the different types of white blood cells. We are then in the next video going to be looking at the structures and the functions of different blood vessels, so arteries, capillaries and veins. And in the final video, we're going to be looking at the structure and the function of the heart. OK, so let's start off with blood. So we need to know why you need blood and the roles of the cells it carries and the things you should be able to do at the end of this video, you need to name the three substances carried in blood. So that's different from the next one, which is the three components of blood. You need to state the function of red blood cells and plasma. You have to describe how to make oxyhemoglobin. Now that's linked to red blood cells. And you need to name the two types of white blood cell and state the function of each type of white blood cell. Okay, so first of all, the actual role of blood, so the job that blood has in the body, is it is simply to transport nutrients as well as oxygen and carbon dioxide around the body. So when you breathe in and out, obviously that's to do with oxygen and carbon dioxide, breathing in oxygen, breathing out carbon dioxide. Your blood is a thing that's responsible for actually taking that from your lungs to the rest of your body for it to use. And obviously nutrients, just the various different nutrients that we need to survive. Okay, so there's your three substances that are carried in blood. Now, what blood is made up of, here's your three components. Part number one, plasma. Part number two, red blood cells. Part number three, white blood cells. Now, there is other stuff in blood. I'm not going to say this is the only stuff in blood ever, but for National 5, these are just the three things that you need to know. Okay, so here's a diagram. You might see a diagram of this. It's unlikely, but you might see it. Um, generally, you might more specifically see a picture of a white blood cell or a picture of a red blood cell, which we'll show you as we go along. Um, but this is a cross section of a blood vessel. This is the blood pouring out of it. The yellow stuff is the plasma. The big kind of blue things with purple blobs in the middle, which are actually the nuclei of those cells, are your white blood cells. And unsurprisingly, the red ones are the red blood cells. OK, so let's have a look at plasma. Plasma, people think that your blood is red. Yes, your blood is red, but the liquid part of blood is actually a kind of almost pea colour. OK, so it's a yellow watery liquid that the other cells are suspended in. There are so many red blood cells in this liquid that when you cut yourself, of course, it looks like you bleed red. But if you were to take, I don't know, a tiny little sieve and sieve out all the red blood cells, you'd be left with a yellow watery liquid that is the plasma. It can carry a small amount of dissolved oxygen inside of it, but the majority of oxygen is in the red blood cells. But it can also carry all the dissolved carbon dioxide that's given off from cells. So when cells are finished with respiration and producing carbon dioxide, that gets dissolved in the plasma, and then that's carried then to the lungs, which we'll look at in the next key area. In terms of red blood cells, now here's a picture of them there. You need to know a couple of things about them. You need to know that they are biconcave in shape. So basically they have a little dip in the middle, um, almost like a donut if the hole just hadn't quite gone the whole way through. Um, and you also have to know that they have no nucleus. So they are very special, unlike all the other cells we've really talked about so far, and that they have no nucleus in them. So they are a special type of cell, which you will learn more about if you want to take iron things. Um, they also contain this molecule called haemoglobin, uh, which is basically this protein that is responsible for carrying oxygen. Now, obviously, the main role of red blood cells is to carry oxygen around your body, so as your muscles and various things can get oxygen when they need it. Um, so this haemoglobin is the thing that allows your red blood cells to actually carry oxygen, and it does this in the form of something called oxyhemoglobin. So basically, the haemoglobin in the red blood cells carries the oxygen, and when they combine, it becomes a molecule called oxyhemoglobin. So just merge the words together very nicely. OK, now white blood cells are part of the body's immune system. Now, remember how you need to know organ systems. Uh, the organ system, number one, you need to know is the endocrine system, which we covered previously. This is a different system that you need to know called the immune system. OK, so this is the second system of organs that you need to know, and that's the immune system. The immune system, you should already know this from life, what happens, like it's a common expression of you have a good immune system, you have a bad immune system, and it's helping you fight disease. OK, white blood cells are responsible for destroying pathogens. And as we can see in that little box in the corner, 
A pathogen is basically anything that causes you to get sick. Now, this could be a virus, a bacterium, a funga, uh, fungus. It could even be a small parasite, so a little single-celled or small multicellular organism. That is also a disease-causing pathogen, so that counts as well. And it's white blood cells that are responsible for destroying these. These are the reasons why we don't die when you get a cold. If you have zero white blood cells and you get a cold, it will kill you. But with white blood cells, they fight it off and you survive. So in terms of the type of white blood cells, you need to know there are two main types. Now, you don't really need to know the difference of them in the diagram, but it shows you that here just to see the nucleus is slightly different, the shape is different. You literally just really need to be able to name the two types and say what they do. So the two types are called phagocytes and lymphocytes. Now, phagocytes is the first one we're going to cover. Phagocytes engulf stuff, as seen in this little gif here. The pink thing is representing a phagocyte. Okay, so phagocytes carry out phagocytosis, and the, that's just a fancy term for this process in which a phagocyte will blob up to something like a pathogen, like a bacterium, and essentially absorb it into its own body and then break it down. So it's going to engulf and digest. Now, important language point, we do not say that the phagocyte eats other pathogens. Do not say that. It's not sciencey enough. Okay, you have to say engulfs, and then you can say and, and di that then digests the pathogen so breaks it down into little harmless things and then deals with it later maybe in the kidneys or something like that so phagocytosis and that means engulfing and digesting pathogens so the other type of white blood cell is called a lymphocyte now lymphocytes are the things that produce things called antibodies which i'm sure you've probably heard about at some point in life so unlike phagocytes phagocytes basically directly go up to a pathogen and they engulf it and they digest it whereas lymphocytes do not go directly to a pathogen. They stay away from it. They have antibodies, which are basically do the little bits of dirty work for them. So when a lymphocyte sets a pathogen, it's a bit too much of a wimp to actually go up to it. It says, I'm going to produce these little things called antibodies, and I'm going to send the antibodies to do it. And the antibodies are, um, they, they basically are the complementary to whatever pathogen it is. So they are the right shape to bind on to whatever pathogen it is, and that's to do with receptors and things, but they don't really need to know that, do they? No, you just need to know that Not they're specific point, no. to each pathogen. Yeah. You just need to know that they're specific, so they're the right shape to basically say, well, this is the coronavirus thing, so I'm going to go up and I've got the right shape for that, and actually I can't deal with chicken pox at all because it's totally different. Mm -hmm. So lymphocytes, they produce antibodies, and it's the antibody that actually goes to the pathogen, and then it will destroy the pathogen from actually, being that's quite specific. A good example. Have you ever had chicken pox? Yes. Yeah, I have not. So, for example, what we can say is Miss Armstrong has got antibodies floating around in her blood right now for the chicken pox virus. I don't. So this means that if uh, I was to encounter the chicken pox virus, I would have to take time to produce those antibodies and I'd probably get quite sick from it. Whereas if Miss Armstrong encounters the uh, chicken pox virus, she already has the antibodies floating in from the time before when she was affected. So she is uh, able to fight it off and defend it. So the antibodies are specific to each pathogen. Um, just to compare the different white blood cells, so in terms of the method of destruction of a pathogen that they use, phagocytes use that process of phagocytosis, so they directly engulf and digest it, whereas lymphocytes actually produce antibodies and send the antibodies to destroy the pathogen instead of doing it themselves. Okay, in terms of interaction, phagocytes, yes, they will directly go and uh, essentially involve themselves with the, the threat, the pathogen, whereas lymphocytes, they'll just have a look and then go, okay, right, I'm going to make these things. Okay. And in terms of spe specificity, phagocytes are not specific. If they see a pathogen, they will go and eat it. They are quite happy to. Whereas lymphocytes, they have to be specific because the antibodies that they produce are specific. So uh, the antigens or the antibodies for a common cold will not go and affect chicken pox, again, as an no. example. They won't do anything to do with it. So lymphocytes are specific to certain pathogens. So let's round off the unit there, or the little part of this section for blood. So plasma is a part of blood and it carries cells and dissolved carbon dioxide. The red blood cells, they contain something called haemoglobin, which is used to carry oxygen in the form of oxyhemoglobin. Lymphocytes, which are a type of white blood cell, release antibodies to disable a specific infection. And phagocytes, they don't care about what type of pathogen it is. It will go up to any pathogen and it will engulf and digest it. Okay, so that's the end of blood. The next video is on blood vessels. So essentially we're looking at the structures that carry these substances through the body in order to keep us alive. See you then.